Oh, hello there, fifth grade students. How are you doing today? That's right. It's time for our read aloud, A Week in the Woods by Andrew Clements. We are going to read the second chapter today, okay? So just sit back, relax, enjoy, listen, uh, close your eyes. If you have the book, follow along, okay? Um, I'm just warning you, there's one character in here that has a Russian accent, actually two characters, but I think only one is speaking for this chapter. So uh, my Russian is not very good, so I'll do my best. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, here we go. Chapter 2, Leaving. Mark Robert Chelmsley watched from a third floor window as Leon and Anya packed the last few boxes into the trunk of the long black car. This is so stupid, he thought. It's not like we're really moving. We're just leaving. Which was true. The large brick house in Scarsdale, New York, hadn't been sold. Everything was staying just as it was. All the furnishings, all the electronics and appliances, even the china and the silverware. All staying put. Mark's parents had decided it would be good to have a place so close to New York City, so they were going to keep the house. And the new house? Simple. The new house was already remodeled and redecorated and completely furnished. Everything brand spanking new. Except for the antiques. This move? There'll be nothing to it. That's what Mark's mom had said. And his dad had nodded and said, Piece of cake. Easy for them to say, thought Mark. They're not even here. Which was also true. Mark's parents, Robert and Eloise Chelmsley, were running a stockholders meeting in San Francisco. Friday, February 13th, his dad had said with a shrug. We promised we'd be there, and there's nothing we can do about it, Mark. It wasn't that Robert Chelmsley didn't care about his son's feelings, because he did, he cared deeply. He could see Mark was upset, but he also thought Mark was old enough now to understand that business is business and a promise is a promise. Plus, he had the nagging fear that Mark wasn't learning to be tough enough to handle the enormous wealth and responsibility he would inherit one day. With another shrug, he said, These schedules get set a full year in advance, Mark. One shot deal. And the people who own 65% of the company have to be there. And that's your mom and me. That's why Leon and Anya had been left in charge of the move. Mark's mom always told everyone that Leon was their handyman, and she said that Anya was her housekeeper. Mark knew better. Leon and Anya were babysitters. For him. The Russian couple had been hired five years ago, and since then his parents had been free to travel as much as they needed to, which was almost all the time. Once it was clear there was nothing he could do to stop the move, Mark had declared that he wanted to take everything. All his stuff. He didn't want a new room and a new house. He wanted things to be the same. Same bed, same desk, same bookcases and curtains and carpets, everything. Mark's dad had shouted, That's ridiculous! But his mom had patted her husband's arm and said to Mark, Dear, I don't think that'll be a problem. That'll be just fine. Then to her husband she said, don't you think that'll be all right, Robert? Nodding slowly and smiling ruefully, Mark's dad said, Sure. Didn't mean to yell about it. Whatever's going to make everyone comfortable is fine with me. So Mark had spent his last week in Scarsdale, sleeping in one of the third floor guest suites, and a team of professional movers had disassembled Mark's room. They took everything. And now that it was time to actually leave, all Mark and Anya and Leon needed to take were two computers, four or five boxes of food, and some clothes. Anya called from the front hallway. Mark, please come down now. It's time to go. Mark called back, in a second. But he didn't move. Mark's face felt hot and he swallowed to fight the lumpy feeling in his throat. He had lived here for almost three years, and he'd made a couple of good friends at Lawton Country Day School. He'd grown a couple of inches and had added some muscle to his wiry frame. Now he was leaving, right in the middle of fifth grade. Next year, he'd have probably made it on to the sixth grade lacrosse team. Maybe the soccer team, too. Except it had already been decided that he would finish out fifth grade at a public school near the new house in New Hampshire. And then next year, he was going to start sixth grade at Running Academy in New Hampshire. Might as well be on the moon, thought Mark. Mark had been over all this before, 
Like, why now, in the middle of February, with less than half of the fifth grade left? His dad had said, Simple. I just bought a company up there near Lebanon, and I want to get the family moved in before the end of the first quarter. There'll be some nice tax breaks if we establish residency in New Hampshire. His mom had quickly said, It's not that, sweetheart. You'll just have gotten back from the February vacation, and we've arranged to have the new house ready then, and February is going to be the most convenient time for everyone, that's all. You can make a nice clean break with your old school, and it'll give you a chance to settle into the area before you go off to summer camp. Settle into the area, thought Mark. Right, like some hick village is going to be my home sweet home. Once I start at Running Academy, I won't even be there for more than a couple of weeks a year. Mark had already checked the map by then. The new house was more than 60 miles north of Running Academy, much too far for driving to school and back every day. So from sixth grade on, Mark would have to be a boarding student. That had already been decided, too. Uh, it'll be good for you, Mark. I know it was good for me. It'll help toughen you up a little. That's what his dad had said about boarding school. There hadn't been any discussion about that, or about anything. Not with him, because when it came to Mark Robert Chelmsley and his future, things weren't discussed. They were decided. It was Leon calling him this time. Mark? Come, please. Snow is starting, and it's a long way. It is time now. Mark didn't answer. He had no reason to hurry. He walked slowly down the front staircase to the second floor and into his empty room. Bare walls, bare hardwood floor, empty closet. He went to the window that faced the backyard and raised the shade for a last look. He pulled in a deep breath through his nose, trying to imprint the smell of this room. This house, these years, trying to burn it into his memory. They had been pretty good years, and he wanted to remember everything. Exactly. But he knew he wouldn't. In a year or so, he wouldn't remember this home any better than he remembered the house in Santa Fe, or the big apartment in Paris, or the brownstone in Manhattan. As he turned to leave, something on the floor caught his eye. It was a penny. He picked it up and looked at the date. Same year he was born. He thought, a lucky penny. Then he laughed at himself for thinking something so stupid. Right, because all the lucky kids get to leave a great school and all their friends and go live out in the middle of nowhere. Mark pulled his arm back to toss the penny into his empty closet, then stopped. He walked slowly around the edge of the room. He paused next to the tall iron radiator by the other window. Mark bent over, put his shoulder against the radiator, and pushed. It rocked just enough. Out loud, he said, this'll do. His voice sounded hollow in the empty room. He pushed again, slid the penny under the front right leg of the radiator, then let it settle back. The penny was completely hidden. It's like a time capsule, he thought, proof that Mark Chelmsley lived the best three years of his life right here. Then Mark ran out of his room and down the front staircase. He pulled the heavy front door shut with a thump, trotted over to where Leon waited for him, and jumped into the back seat of the Mercedes. Leon shut Mark's door, then climbed in the driver's side, fastened his seatbelt, and started the engine. Anya turned around in her seat to smile at Mark, but she knew better this than to say anything. She knew that it was how tough it was to leave things behind. As the car swung the wide arc of the brick driveway and then turned onto the road, Mark didn't look back. Next stop, New Hampshire. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's chapter. I'll have chapter three posted for you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Keep healthy, keep safe, and we'll be in touch. Make a great day.